my, 26F, boyfriends, 27 meters, friend, 28F, keeps joking about our kids not being his. CW, rape. My boyfriend, James, and I have been together for 5 years. In the first year of us dating, I was raped and impregnated. After a lot of debate I decided to keep the baby. I broke up with James, as while he knew about the assaults and said he wanted to be with me anyway. I felt guilty about dragging him into this. James refused to let me push him away, saying he was in this for the long haul. So we stayed together, and our son is now 3. While our son definitely looks a lot like me, he does not look like James. James James doesn't care, and loves our son all the same. It's pretty widely know that our son isn't James's biological child. While very few people know the whole truth, James and I have agreed to respond to questions by saying we took a break around the time of the conception and the bio father isn't involved, which is technically true, albeit very sugar-coated. James and I are now engaged, and I'm currently pregnant. I'm estimated to be somewhere between 4 and 5 months right now, I'm waiting on my first scan still. James has a friend, Mia. Around the time James and I got together, Mia started dating James's friend, and when they broke up about 6 months ago, Mia got the friend group in the split. Mia has always been weird about me and James. I thought she might have a thing for him, but James is about as observant as a brick wall so he doesn't seem to notice. James is also unerringly loyal and loving so I'm not worried. But since we told people about my pregnancy, Mia has been joking about this baby not being James's, either. She's been doing this in a group chat which both James and I are part of. One memorable comment was congrats on having two kids James, hopefully one of them is yours but there have been others comments like that one. I just remember that one because James saw red. The second he saw it he called Mia directly and told her off over the phone. Despite this, Mia has not eased up on the jokes, and I'm concerned that it is getting to James, as he's normally very chill and never reacts strongly, but following her comments he gets angry at her and possessive towards towards me. Don't get me wrong, I am not complaining about the increased affection, but I'm worried that Mia's comments are hitting too close to home with him and upsetting him. I've been staying out of it but should I talk to Mia myself? Is there anything I can do to reassure James and encourage him to open up if this is bothering him? Please completely cut this woman out of your life and tell her to stay the fuck away from your family. Get this woman put of your lives, she's toxic AF and I'm not surprised James is about to lose it with her. I'd make it public on that chat why you are leaving then leave, block her on everything. She's nasty. I've honestly never seen James this irate with anyone except my attacker. I'm worried naming and shaming as we left would be too far as most of our friends are in the group and they don't like drama, and I wouldn't want to alienate them. Could she be trying to split the friend group up further by pushing you guys out? I won't rule anything out for certain, but I'm not sure why she would want to split the group further. Given that you tried to keep this private and it didn't work, I'd make it public that it isn't acceptable, and make sure that you talk to your friend group, otherwise, you risk having her staying part of them and continuing to poison the environment. Edit, I forgot to say that both of you sound so damn strong. Going through what you did and to be a family speaks volumes to your bond to each other and your child. You both need to distance yourself from Mia. She is not your friend. If she was, knowing how the joke upset your BF, she would have cut it out. She hasn't, so cut her out. My ex-husband sent my current boyfriend an explicit video of us when we were married. It's been over a year since I, F24, left my ex-husband, M24. We officially got divorced in October of 2020, after several delays due to COVID. I moved different states to ensure that I was as far away from him as possible. This is where I met my current boyfriend, M23, and have been happily together for the past couple of months. My BF is in the military so he has been away for training for the past month and a half. Adapting hasn't been the easiest as he only gets his phone a limited time a day but we've managed. Yesterday, I get a phone call at 2am from my BF angrily accusing me of cheating on him. Me, half asleep and confused, laugh responding with what are you talking about? He, expecting me to know what he's talking about as the assumed guilty party, kept responding with how could you do this to me, and why him?
he finally managed to say that he was emailed a video of me engaging in explicit activities with another man claiming to have happened the night prior. Completely dumbfounded I didn't know what to say and continued to try and say there's no way that's real. After several hours of calling with hang-ups, he finally calmed down to let me at least figure this out and I tried to as rationally as I could through tears. He had already called things off at this point. I asked if in the video I had any visible tattoos to verify it was me and if so which ones. In the past year, I have gotten my most visible tattoos which would establish a timeline. He took screenshots and cross-examined the video. The video was then confirmed to be old and he apologized for so quickly jumping to the conclusion I had cheated, understandably given the video's intended implication. The only person who I would have trusted to take such a video with was my ex-husband. But there was no way to prove that as he isn't seen or heard in the portion he sent, as well as it being sent from a fake email account. I am horrified and feel violated. I didn't know what to say or how to feel. This being something I never thought I would experience. We are still confused as to how he even was able to find my BFC mail. Unfortunately, this has naturally created tension between us. We are both angry and hurt. I'm set to fly out tomorrow morning to spend the weekend with him, a pre-planned trip, and I'm worried we won't be able to focus on each other as we had intended. I'm even more nervous to be intimate as he was just forced to watch a past experience and is now feeling insecure. I don't know what to do or how to fix it. Please help. It's a crime. I would press charges on him. You said your boyfriend deleted the email. Emails which are deleted normally go into a deleted or bin folder and are not specifically deleted until you either clear out that folder or until an auto cleanup routine has done the job. If it is in that folder you can normally undelete it. Similarly computers and phones have been slash trash folders which also hold deleted files, so the actual video may be there but the email or text would be better as it gives it context. In many places this is a crime. You should call the police and report him. See this is the direction I wanted to go to once my pain turned to anger. My sister is a lawyer and she informed me of revenge porn laws. She got me in touch with a friend of hers who practices civil matters, such as this. Unfortunately, they needed the video as proof and my BF, who never wanted to see the video again, deleted it completely. If he does it again we can pursue it but at this time we no longer can do anything. You must feel so violated. Revenge porn laws exist in many countries, might be worth looking into. Might be difficult for someone to prove it was him, but if you can attest no one else could have videoed you, that might be enough. I'm sorry this happened. absolutely contact the police and an attorney. They would be able to track where that email came from if an investigation is opened up, the sooner the better. Keep everything you have from that incident and don't delete anything and make sure your boyfriend doesn't either. Just remember to talk this out calmly with your BF and try to emphasize how much this is affecting you as well. It's going to be hard, but if he realizes you're just as hurt as he is then he shouldn't be angry at you, his anger should be at your ex. He's attempting to fuck up your romantic life cause he probably has none. It's clear it was your ex-husband who did it, but please contact an attorney ASAP, or even speak to an attorney with your boyfriend present to help ease tension. Maybe ask him if he's willing to speak to a couple's counselor together if he's having a hard time coming to terms with what he saw. It's obvious your ex doesn't want you to move on in any way, your boyfriend has to decide if he wants to ride this drama with you. One of my daughters is critically ill and the other is understandably upset at the disruption to her life. I, 45F, have two daughters, one 16, Audrey, and one 13, Kelly. My older daughter was diagnosed late last year with a rare, aggressive bone slash blood disease. Rare enough that I'm not naming it because it might identify her slash her sister. It is often, but not always, deadly, and once the decline begins it's quick. I am a single mother, my husband passed away when my younger daughter was five. I am pursuing treatment for Audrey, obviously, but due to the rarity of the disease, the closest hospital with specialists equipped to deal with it is a 10-hour drive away. There are treatments available, but they will take several months, 
and my daughter will be spending most of that time in the hospital. Within six to nine months, either the treatments will have made significant traction and made her symptoms relatively manageable, or we will know that it's time for hospice care for Audrey. Obviously it's more complex than that, but that's the gist. Also, I realize that I may sound cold in the way I'm describing this believe me, I have spent many nights sobbing. It's just that the only way I can coherently talk about this is to fall back on facts, or I just turn into a total mess. I'm planning on renting a studio apartment near the hospital in the city where my daughter will be treated, where I will split my time between working from home. I can't quit my job or even take extended FMLA right now. We need my insurance and my income both, and being at the hospital. If my husband was alive, we'd probably trade off, with one of us in the city with Audrey and the other at home with Kelly, probably switching off. But there's only one of me. So I spoke to my parents and the current plan is for them, they're retired, to move in with my daughter in our house, to uproot her as little as possible, and take care of her for the six to nine months that this will be ongoing. Ellie hates this plan. She at first asked if she could just come with me, but the thing is, she'd be basically in a tiny apartment with me spending most of my time working, at the hospital, or asleep. She wouldn't be able to go to the hospital with me even once she's fully vaccinated, which won't be for about six weeks since vaccinations for ages 12 to 16 just opened up, the hospital is keeping a tight lock on visitors and there's no guarantee they'll let her in. If she stays home, she keeps her familiar surroundings, can attend her own school and, once she's vaccinated, see friends, etc. And she'd have much more present caretakers, people who are not working and are also not spending all their free time at a hospital. I had already planned to come home for a few days every couple weeks to see Kelly, and to FaceTime her daily, I just can't live there because the drive is too long to the hospital. Because we don't live near an airport hub, flying wouldn't make this significantly quicker. She gets along with her grandparents very well, and before her sister got sick the two of them used to spend two to three weeks of summer vacation with them, camping or traveling or just hanging out something they both looked forward to. Nevertheless, in case she had some qualm about them specifically, I asked if there was someone else she wanted to stay with her aunt and uncle would gladly take her, though she'd have to move to a different town, they can't move due to their jobs, and her best friend's mom told me that if she needed to stay with them she'd be welcome. She said no. It's not about not being comfortable with her grandparents. It's losing me for that time period, having her grandparents act as parental figures, and all the upheaval that entails. Plus the fact that there has been some belt tightening recently nothing major. She has still gotten new clothes and Christmas gifts as normal, but budget has become a bigger thing than it was in the past, and vacations are kind of going to be an on thing for a while. She says that I'm prioritizing her sister over her. She says that just because she isn't sick doesn't mean she doesn't need her mom. She says it's not fair that things have to change. It isn't, and I've validated that. None of this is fair. I think that this is probably her way of pro processing her anger and sadness at her sister being sick, by lashing out at a safe person, me, combined with teenage hormones and general fear for the future. Kelly and Audrey always got along well, nothing more than normal sibling tiffs, and I know she looked up to Audrey. She sees a therapist via telemed, as do I, though obviously I have no idea what they talk about. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong here, but I am open to being told otherwise. But mostly, what can I do? Is this something I should just try it out and accept that she'll probably blame me for a while, or should I be handling it differently? Too long didn't read, my, 45F, older daughter, 16F, is very ill, and I need to temporarily move to a major city to facilitate her treatment, and my younger daughter, 13F, is upset about the massive life changes this entails, as her grandparents will be moving in to take care of her, my husband passed away 8 years ago, am I inadvertently mistreating her, how to navigate this, 